hey viewers, today I want to share something that's a lot more personal and probably a lot less fun than a lot of my other videos. And that's my own personal experience with really severe anxiety disorder and depression. And I think it's really important to note, you know, a lot of my other videos are look at me, look at what I've done, look at these cool things that I can teach you, you know, look at my great results on Tinder and that's all there, but it's easy for it's easy for a, a, a profile, an online um, YouTube profile to be curated that looks like this guy has it all figured out. His, his life is perfect. Everything's cool. And it's never the case. And I think I want to, I want to share something very personal about me with my viewers that I think hopefully will help some of you connect and understand that you're not alone if you're dealing with anxiety or depression in your own life. And I also want to share what I've learned and what's really worked, what hasn't worked, what I've been disappointed by over the years to give you I, maybe something that you can work with in your own lives, give you some motivation, give you some reason to hold on and keep going. So I hope you enjoy this and uh, let's get started. So I want to first up just apologize if this video ends up feeling like a bit of a ramble rant because it's so, so personal in nature. I didn't want to script it. I wanted this to be 100% real, me sharing my experience with you so that you could feel, I don't know, so that it didn't feel fake at all, because I don't want this to be fake, because this is a very serious area for a lot of guys, right? So, look, um, I started uh, getting, I had my first panic attack when I was 16 years old. I didn't know what was going on. I was in a movie cinema uh, with my girlfriend at the time, and I we just sat down, and my heart was going, boo, 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 boo. I could feel it beating in my chest, and, and I felt like I couldn't breathe properly, and I felt like I was, even if I think about it, now I can feel myself starting to hyperventilate. You know, I felt, I started to feel really anxious and started to get lightheaded. And I was 100% sure something very, very serious was going on. Um, and uh, we, I slowly crawled out of the cinema with my, my, my girlfriend with me and she called an ambulance, which came um, in a little while to pick us up. And I remember the ambulance driver taking my heart rate and my blood pressure and he was saying, hey, what drugs are you on? And I was like, I'm not on any drugs. And he'd look at my girlfriend and say, what drugs is he on? What has he taken? And she's like, I don't know. He hasn't taken anything. He's not someone who takes drugs. And, you know, they, they weren't really believing that something wasn't wrong. I remember that in the ambulance. And I remember being at the hospital and being tested for uh, some sort of heart protein to see if I'd had a heart attack or what was going on. Um, and they wanted to keep me under observation for a few days. And of course, this was uh, not, I mean, okay, it was like, what was it, 17 years? Wait, when was I 26? This is 23 years ago. Um, no, 21 years ago. Um, and, you know, you'd think that they would have flagged this as panic, but back then they didn't. And so I had this whole experience being sure something was wrong, multiple blood tests being held for observation, heart scans, all these things going on. And, and they released me saying, we don't know what it is, just keep an eye on your heart. And so I left the hospital and from that point forwards in my life, I never felt like I could just let go 100% because I was always worried that something might go wrong. So from 16 years old onward, old onwards, I was no longer laissez-faire. You know, I could no longer just go into life with reckless abandon. I was always aware something could be wrong with me. And it took about six months to realize, hey, this is actually an anxiety disorder because the only reason I recognized it was, was because my mom had had anxiety disorder in her life and my sister had had that anxiety disorder in her life. And it was in a thing that existed in my family. And we flagged it. We started to work on it. And the doctors wanted to put me on, on, on drugs, on antidepressants and things. And the first thing my mom wanted to try was, let's just try getting him exercising. Let's just try getting him out and getting him moving again. Because I used to exercise a lot and do a lot of sport. I'd stopped recently. Um, and so I started going out and exercising more and just doing long walks, like brisk long walks up and down hills. And it really started to help. Um, that was my first experience with exercise dramatically helping anxiety because I was quite neurotic after that hospital visit. And so I started going out and exercising and, and it really, really helped a lot. And uh, just a message right now, exercise has been one of the key things that's always helped me with anxiety. And, and the evidence is out there, the scientific evidence as well. If you've got anxiety disorder or depression, you're not exercising, it's a thing you've got to start. But I started going out and exercising a lot. Uh, what was interesting, though, was that by the time I was 18, 17, 18, doing my HSC, my anxiety returned. So it, it, I got it managed and then it started to come back. It came back again. And, you know, through my HSC was a, a nightmare time in my life. Uh, 
the HSC is the, the final exam in Australia that you do in your high school. And in early uni, I had a lot of trouble with anxiety, constant panic attacks, having to leave university and go home. And so I had this really big re emergence, even though I was exercising regularly. And so I, I tried going on antidepressants. So, um, you know, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. And I will say that at the time they, they did help. They did help. But the problem was they also changed my personality. So I started, I became a bit of an asshole. I didn't really care about other people. So I started, I think I ended up stealing money from my parents, which I feel really ashamed about. I cheated my friends quite a lot, quite badly. And I was really displeased with that. And I desperately wanted to get off the antidepressants. So I went off of those. And when I went off of them, my anxiety reappeared, came back so badly that I was, I couldn't leave the house. I was stuck in the house because I couldn't go away from home for more than, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes and start to get a panic attack. And I need to get home to be safe, to be somewhere secure where I felt comfortable. I didn't want to freak out. I was very ashamed, right, of being freaking out and, and being anxious in front of other people. I just wanted to be home where it was safe. And so I, I kind of, I kind of was stuck at home for a number of months. And I started seeing a number of different psychologists and psychiatrists. And of course, the psychiatrist wanted to put me back on SSRIs, which I really didn't want to do. I didn't like that experience. Uh, and uh, I, I, one of my therapists that I saw, I, I, one thing I'll also note, a lot of psychologists did me absolutely no good. A lot of psychiatrists did me absolutely no good. I was seeing a lady who wasn't a psychologist. <laughs> she was a therapist. And what she got me doing was meditating every day. And this was my second big thing that's, that really helps a lot with anxiety is daily meditation. And meditation is an easy practice to get good at. And I started doing meditation 20 minutes a day every day, as well as exercise. And that became the second thing. It became the second safeguard against having panic attacks and anxiety. And meditation really helped me a lot. And it's one of the things that I turn a lot of my clients to is exercise and meditation because boy, oh boy, did it help, um, you know? And so, and so that was good. And I, and from that point onwards, I was about 21 years old. I got my anxiety under control and I had my anxiety control for decades. You know, and, and, and then that became my story when I started School of Attraction. I started this company. I told everyone the story about how I had crippling anxiety that left me trapped in my bedroom. But I overcame it. And it was the hero's journey. It was, it was fantastic. And then I was 32 years old and I was sitting in the lounge room with my partner, my girlfriend and uh, her, her sister. And I, I felt my heart go boom, 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 started to go really fast. And I thought to myself, oh. I know this. This is anxiety. This is panic. I'm going to get up and I'm going to go outside and just walk slowly and let the adrenaline get out through my system. So I got up and I went outside and started walking around and I let, tried to let the adrenaline get out of my body, you know, tried to escape that feeling and slowly walking, slowly walking, looking at my heart rate. I had my, an Apple watch at the time and heart rate was 150, very slowly walking. All right. All right. I'm just panicked. This is just anxiety. Slowly walk, slowly walk. An hour later, my heart rate was still 150, 160, 150. I was jumping around, very slow walking. I'd sit down and, and try to breathe and it would only go down to 140, 145. I thought, shit, this is not good. I've never had anxiety do that, um, especially when I'm not focused on anything being wrong with me. I thought maybe I should drop into the doctor because this has never really happened with heart rate so high and everything. So I went to the doctor and the doctor said, could be anxiety, but let's get you to a hospital. So they sent me off to a hospital. And the hospital were looking at me and my heart rate was still high. And this was two, three hours later. And they, they, they thought, mm, we can't find anything. They did tests on my heart. They had a look and they said, look, it's probably anxiety. Um, just try to rest and see if it'll go down. So I, I went home and my heart rate slowly, slowly went down. Uh, and then everything went haywire from that point. So things, really weird things started to happen to me. So I would get out of bed in the morning and... As soon as I stood up, my heart rate would, would go from about 55 beats per minute because I was exercising quite a bit. I was a healthy guy. My heart rate would go from 55, so boom, 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 to boom, 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 boom jump up to 120, 130, just from standing out of bed. And it would stay that level. So I'd, I'd stand for a while. My heart rate would stay high, would stay really elevated. And so what I suddenly had was what the medical profession calls orthostatic intolerance. So I would suddenly have my heart rate jump really high when I was standing and, I, and it would only last for sort of a few hours, two, three hours in the mornings, and then it would eventually pass. And if I at all would get anxious or bothered or excited about something, my heart rate would jump up and it wouldn't jump back down. 
So this is this really weird thing that I was assuming had to be anxiety because I had really bad anxiety in my past. And, but it was making me anxious and it was making me neurotic because it's not fun because it's, it's not just your heart rate going up. Of course, your body gets chocked full of adrenaline and really unpleasant feeling hormones that are designed to make you anxious, right? Make you feel unhappy and uncomfortable. So it couldn't easily be ignored. And things got worse. I mean, I got more neurotic because imagine you get someone who has, and this is a thing about anxiety, is that if you have anxiety, that tends to be your release valve. So if life gets too stressful, or things go wrong, or things go haywire in your life, your body tends to vent it through anxiety. So it, you will always be, ha- be have the ability to get panic and to get really bad anxiety trouble. And that's where my body went. Uh, and and so it was dreadful that I would get this, this heart rate jumping up all the time. I got started to get really neurotic and really anxious. I started to try to control it. So I, I tr- restricted my food intake. I started eating only certain foods. I started cutting out salt. I tried all these things to try to regulate my heart rate. I tried to find the answer to what was going on. And that creates its own neurosis because, uh, you know, OCD, I never quite had OCD, but OCD is really a form of trying to get control over your life and try to feel a sense of control. So I was becoming quite obsessed about trying to do different things to try to control this situation that I had no idea what was going on. And Doctors start doing tests and, 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 and doctors would send me to doctors, would send me to doctors because I had real things that didn't quite fit with anxiety disorder. And they found that my hormones were really out of whack. So, for example, they found that my serotonin was three times the limit it's supposed to be, the upper limit of what it's supposed to be. So super high serotonin levels. And if you look at the literature, there's the, the, the medical literature, they'll say, well, if you've got elevated serotonin, either you've been taking SSRIs or other recreational drugs, which of course I hadn't, or... Or you've got a uh, a type of tumor that can grow in your around your adrenal around somewhere around your gut area, and it it can be a bad type of tumor to have, and it causes really high serotonin levels. So yeah, you could well have cancer. We better get you tested. Yes, this is this is what this looks like. So of course I had to go through this whole thing, get tested. No, nope, couldn't find that tumor either. So I was left in a really horrible situation with a body that was doing really crazy things. I'd become really neurotic, hyper anxious. I was stuck in the house. Not just because of anxiety, because anxiety was a big part of it, but it was because anywhere I'd go, my body would just go haywire, right? I'd get really extreme symptoms. And whether I was feeling anxious beforehand or not, and I became more and more neurotic. And when you lose control in your life, when you, when things go wrong for you in your world, you become depressed. You feel like there's nothing that you can do to get your life back. You feel everything's changed. You You know, I was supposed to be this really confident guy who ran this big dating coaching school, and here I was trapped at home, my body falling apart. I honestly felt like I was going to die. I did. I felt like like my life was over, honestly. I felt like it was all coming to an end. I didn't know it was wrong. Doctors didn't know it was wrong. It seemed to be getting worse. There was nothing I could do. Um, It was the darkest period of my entire life was when I was 32. And very few people knew about it. Um, I think that at the time, and it's, I think it's part of one of the reasons I'm making this video, I felt a lot of shame around it because I was supposed to have had my life sorted and, and had it together. And I was teaching these men and coaching these guys. I wasn't doing the coaching anymore. I was very fortunate to have coaches who worked for me who could take over. And I had an amazing crew around me and my partner was amazing. And Having gone through this, I felt alone. You know, when you, even though I had an amazing partner by my side, I had a couple of good friends and, and family who were supportive, I felt so lonely. And because to go through something like that, it's hard and no one else can really understand. And that's, that's another reason why I wanted to make this is I know that some of you watching feel alone. Some of you watching feel like there's nothing that you can do that's going to make your life better. And that's how I felt. And I really felt pretty defeated. And I, I've never been someone to lean towards suicide as an option, but I, I can appreciate that a lot of people can have suicidal thoughts because I really felt like, what's the point? You know, is, why am I trying? And so... How did my life change after a while? I I started trying to exercise, but I couldn't exercise much. I eventually learned, by the way, if you'd like to know what was going on with my body, we're not 100% sure why, but my body can't break down a number of hormones properly anymore. So my body doesn't really effectively break down serotonin. It doesn't effectively break down adrenaline. It doesn't break down a lot of different hormones very well. And so if they get built up to a high enough level, my body freaks out and it can't do anything, right? can't take it out of the bloodstream and so my body goes haywire don't quite know why it is we know that it helps to get some exercise though i can't do a lot of heavy exercise as you guys who've known me for a long time probably seen i've gotten skinny because i can't eat huge amounts um i can't exercise a lot so i can't build muscle 
So, you know, a lot of that's going on for me, but we've learned to regulate it. You know, I've learned I could, taking a really large amount of magnesium helps. It helps my body to regulate the hormones. So yeah, there's a lot of coping strategies I've learned that have helped with what's going on now, but yeah, I've got a physical situation that exacerbates the anxiety and stuff as well. And um, I'm not out of it yet. You know, my life is not perfect. I, I, my life is not where it was. I'm not trapped in the house. I go out, I have friends, I, I, I do things. But it's been a very slow and painful journey. And I, and I suppose what I want to tell guys is this. I was really dark for about a year and a half, two years, where life felt like I didn't know how it was going to get better. And I still have moments occasionally now where I feel that because what I'm going through is scary and hard. A lot of men have that. A lot of women have that. A lot of human beings have that. No one's life is perfect. No one has the picture perfect thing going on. You know, I'm incredibly fortunate that I had a partner with me, an incredible partner with me. And I'm incredibly fortunate that I had parents who were supportive. And not everyone has that. And if you don't have that, keep fighting. Keep at it. You know, it's it's it will change. This too will pass. And that's something that I keep reminding myself regularly. You know, I've been at this for three, four years and I'm slowly recovering, slowly getting better, slowly learning to deal with this health situation that, that is no one's fault. Couldn't help it. I've always been healthy my whole life. What are you going to do? Um, it can happen to the best of us. And so, yeah, there's not much more to say, guys. You know, if you're alone, if you're struggling with anxiety, depression, you get exercising helps immensely. Uh, my physical condition made that hard, so I lost my coping strategy. Uh, one more thing I'll say other than the exercise and the meditation. I've learned that other than SSRI, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, they really screw with your entire system. Your entire brain chemistry changes when you take these drugs. And they're, they're good. I mean, I'm not saying don't take them. I'm saying there is another alternative which I've discovered which can be much more helpful. Talk to your doctor about it. But I've discovered that... Um, um, Beta blocker drugs, so um, uh, I used to take propanolol, can be absolutely incredible for those who suffer panic attacks. Uh, now, in theory, beta blockers should only just help to, if you want to know what they do, they essentially um, prevent your body from absorbing certain types of, of adrenaline, if I've got that correctly, or certain types of yeah, adrenaline, things that will cause your heart rate, your breathing and things to, to increase, to speed up, so your body stays more relaxed. And it's interesting that just um, interrupting that part of the feedback loop can be really, really powerful way to regulate anxiety. And I've spoken to a lot of doctors now um, who have said, I've started recommending propanolol or other beta blockers first to anxiety sufferers rather than SSRIs, and I've gotten far better results with far fewer side effects because propanolol has been around since the 50s. It's super well tolerated. So I'm not saying just go out and try the drug right willy-nilly. Talk to your doctor about it. Uh, obviously, I'm not supported by any of these drug companies, but... It's something that I've discovered that I wish people had told me about earlier on and lots of doctors don't know about or don't think about. If doctors had told me when I was 16 that I could try that, I could have had propanolol in my pocket and taken it any time I was getting a panic attack. And I think that would have been much better for regulating my fear than anything else. So that's the stuff that I've learned. Exercise is powerful, meditation is powerful, and propanolol is something that can help. I hope that in watching this video, you haven't been too bored. I hope that you've gotten some insight into my life and to realize my life isn't perfect, that I've got horrible stuff going on in my world that, that like anyone else, yeah. If you've got questions about my anxiety, if you want to have a chat, reach out. Just say, hey, I've got trouble as well. I'll, uh, I'm going to put my email in the, in, the, in the comments below as well because I think that it's a really important thing that there's someone that you can reach out to if you're struggling with anxiety, depression. Always happy to be to have a chat with you guys. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. And of course, yeah, subscribe to the channel if you like this. If you've been listening for a while and you found this this interesting. Um, I'd love to hear from you guys. My next video will be more fun. This was really important, I think, to share because not enough people want to talk about anxiety and depression. It's not fun. It's not really marketable, but I think it's crucial. So I hope this has meant something. Take care, and I'll see you in my next video. Cheers.